Hi, I'm Enzo Carter, and today we're going to be talking about x-rays. Because if you're making a, a nuclear fusion reactor, you're actually also making an x-ray machine. <coughs> Let's look at each component of the system. First off, we're going to look at our roughing part. This is the this this and the gauge is the first two things we usually turn on. Because we turn on the gauge and then the roughing pump. The roughing pump is what first starts sucking everything out. And this thing gets us down to 76 millitor microns. And that, that's safe enough to turn on the turbo pump. This thing, what it does, the reason we can't turn it off, turn it on so the first is because it's um, uh, blades, you see? When it's in, if you turn it on in an atmosphere, they would just get shredded by water molecules and air molecules and stuff. It destroyed it. And these things are not cheap. Now let's go over to some new equipment, our 7,000 volt. We used to have a 30,000 volt, it's down here, but it kind of lied to us. Or, no, it didn't lie. It um, malfunctioned or something. And it only goes to 20,000, so we got the 7,000 volt. And it is, um, we're gonna do an x-ray test with it. And now let's look inside here. So you have the cathode, which you might be able to see in the mirror. Right there. And that, and then you got the actual chamber, which is what you put the deuterium gas in. And, and the, the, this, the power supply lights up the cathode, which um, starts to glow, like plasma glow, which would separate the protons and the electrons. And the, and the deuterium, the now electronless protons would head towards the cathode where all the, where there's ton, the negatively charged cathode, because there's tons of electrons over there, they head straight for it, and they all ran, run into each other, and if it goes how we want it to go, a neutron will fly off, but sometimes a proton flies off, and that's when the end, the end thing would be tritium, which is very dangerous, and I forget what the half-life is, I think it's around 12 hours, I don't know exactly, but then really what would have to do, we'd have to Hook up something right here to go pump it somewhere where we're not going to breathe it in. That We don't even have the deuterium hooked up, so we can't even, we don't have to worry about that yet. And this is our high voltage feed through, what basically our 7000 volt power supply connects to. And that, so in the feed through, connect is has the cathode on the end of it, which in the, so the, the power supply pumps electric pumps electrons into the cathode and that starts the glow plasma all right now we're ready to prepare the system first thing we're going to do is cut on the roughing pump with this switch and that will get us down this is the turbo pump switch we're going to wait till it gets down to uh basically around 80 millitor where the lowest this thing can go we're going to wait till then to just be extra safe because these things don't come cheap, like I said. Alright? When it starts getting slow, it's going to be very soon. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to do it around 90. Yeah, I'll try 90. Okay. Turn it slow down. Alright. Uh, starting the turbo. Well, you can see there's a blinking light now. And that is the uh, turbo spinning up. It takes a little second to spin up, but it's definitely on because it's going down much faster. Alright, we're going to put our high voltage on. No, we're going to leave it. Right. And our Geiger counter is all set up. And this is our safety Geiger counter. So, like, if this thing goes nuts, we run out of the room. No, we switch the power off and run out of the room. Because that means that the x-rays are going insane. Like, like straight through this. And over here, this one is for the x-rays coming out. That's actually what we're going to measure. And you might think, well, the tube's on the back. And it's pointing forward. That's because the x-rays will go straight through and, into, and hit the tube. Okay. Now we're gonna do. Now we're gonna talk about where the X-rays are going. 
So, first when we cut on the high voltage, it's not on yet. So over here, this, they would come out of here a lot, definitely, when we get to a certain voltage. The stainless steel will protect us up to a certain voltage, which is around 30,000, when they will start coming out. Or maybe more, maybe? And they also, some people don't know this, X-rays will go through ceramic. So we also gotta watch out this. We'll test this with our home defense Geiger counter, which is right there. In case you're wondering where we get this stuff, well, first of all, there's eBay, and then sometimes Amazon. But there's this other magical place we that's called called MRAM Surplus Appliance. You can pause the video to look at their business card. But it's basically a junkyard filled with really cool stuff they can scavenge. Well, recently, we uh, picked up this. This is a 100 watt, 10 ohm resistor, and it. We're gonna in it. We're gonna use it to measure um, current from our uh, high voltage. So that's that. And here's our business card again. If you wanna look at that again. All right. I'm Mr. Carter, and um, this is our Rams. Uh, basically, a scavenger place. They have old parts and machines, and this is where I sometimes come to scavenge parts for my reactor. Here's something I found while walking through the bu building. It is a um, oscilloscope, and uh, I think it looks pretty cool. All right, we're almost ready to turn the this thing, the high voltage on, and start making X-rays. First, just take a look at um, this is our this is previous testing. This is 1,600 counts per minute at 228,000 volts. That's a lot. This goes to 70. I'm curious. Let's see. All right, we're gonna switch this guy on. All right, it's on standby. I really like this guard. Sweet. All right. High voltage enabled. All right, we're gonna set it up right around 3,000 right now. The cathode won't burn up right now because it's so low pressure you can't really make a plasma. All right. We're gonna try and uh, go slowly so we don't want to overload it. You know, we actually I think accidentally did that once. Oh, the counter is just new 16, and this thing's not really doing anything. We're gonna check, this one's gonna check over here, we're actually gonna check over there as well. Alright, now we're gonna shoot for 25,000 volts. So, let's start making our way up. The, guy, the counter just is still at background. You hear that? It's going up. Alright, this is 25,000. Let's just shit for a minute. Alright, yeah, it's already like much higher. You can hear it. It's going. This is only 25. It's at already 180. About our home one is isn't really doing it. And we're safe, basically. And if we get it to where it's high enough to go through that metal, we can bring this out. This. this is some lead shielded. So really, what we do is we stick this around there so we don't irradiate ourselves. But right now we're not doing high enough voltages to radiate ourselves. This is some heavy metal. Think about lead, it's easy to bend, which is good. So we can get it in a nice position over there. And yeah, th this, you see, uranium, when it half lights the end thing about uranium half lifing when it stops half lifing is lead. It, with radioactive elements, they keep half lifing until they reach a stable, stable isotope. And lead, there's two types of lead. Some lead is radioactive. This is stable lead, of course. But some lead is actually is radioactive. Now we're gonna put this back because we don't need it. Over. Back over here. Wow, we're at 800 counts per minute. 
Last time we were at 25,000 volts, it did 400. Or over 500. Wow, we've lasted on for much longer. All right, we're gonna raise the voltage a little bit. Like, right, let's go to 28,000. Wow, we're at 1,000 pounds per minute. This thing did 1,600 at 18,000, but it's still climbing. I actually have a stopwatch because it counts per minute. We can stopwatch it for a minute, but we might do that later. Wow, we're at 16,000 now. 17. Yeah. I haven't even gone up to 30 yet. The highest we've been is 28, I believe. Now we're going to use our home defense and move around to see different areas, the radioactivity. So if you're sitting over here, what would it be like? So let's move a little bit. So earlier, someone might have been sitting over here. Oh, this thing's just saying, all right, we're gonna move it a little bit. Like, look, it just went. Did you see that? It's going crazy. Now we're gonna um, uh, look a little bit around the um, our uh, ceramic. Yeah, it's going crazy. Wow. Yeah, I would. Wow, it's at. So right away. 28,000, and it's at almost 44,000 pounds per minute. That's insane. All right, should we raise it? I don't know. All right, we're gonna raise it a little bit. It'll be funny if a fly landed on that glass. We find it a couple days later with an abnormal growth. Wow, we're at like 4,500. Wow, that's insane. What was that 5,000 pounds per minute? That's crazy. Yeah. This one right here is for our safety. So if stuff starts coming through that, we know very, very quickly. And that thing will light up very fast, as you saw a second ago. Wow, that, what's that? We're almost at 10,000 pounds per minute. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. At 28,000, it was on, oh, it was only at, only at 1,600. Wow, it's, it's literally at almost, it's almost, it's about at 20, 10,000 CPM. That's crazy. I, the only thing that I've seen that, that hot in this area is my uranium, which I actually found a 62,000 count per minute, but it's stored away safely. Actually, recently I measured the radiation outside the place where we keep it, and it's pretty safe. Right now, um, this is our home defense Geiger counter, and it's showing around, um, what? So if background is around 15, and it's saying 400 to 500 right here, that's a lot. That's actually a lot. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. We might need some shielding at some point, because this thing is going pretty bad. That thing is going really insane. That thing is at 10,000. I'm going to steal one. Okay. So the takeaway of this video is, so if you're under 30,000 volts and you're not standing in the two exits, which are the high voltage feed through and the viewing port, you're not standing next to either of those, and you're standing where I am, you're pretty good. But above 30,000 volts, it starts to get a little hot and you might need some lead shielding right here. How do I make this into a real x-ray machine? Well, with this, this is x-ray paper, and if you put this in front of the viewport and you put something in front of it like this flashlight uh there would actually be a shadow back here where x-rays were hitting the flashlight from yeah the x-rays hitting the flashlight and it would fluoresce and that's all there is to an x-ray machine